A few words. My name is Jose Carrera, for those of you who don't know me, and uh, I'm the director of the DRE Center for Fire Safety and Engineering. And I'm just going to say a few words of introduction, and uh, before I pass it to uh, Professor Abdullah Dad Prize, uh, who will introduce um, the in inaugural Philip H. Thomas uh, lecture that will start the conference. So, uh, before we get started, um, there's several things I want to say. Uh, the first thing is why the title and the subject of this uh, uh, conference today. So, this is uh, the fire seat, and basically it's fire uh, safety engineering or fire research applied to something. And uh, in this particular case, we felt that the application uh, to standardization was an application that deserved uh, a day of discussion. I think that uh, when we put people around the table to try to discuss the value of standards, there's very uh, diverging opinions. And uh, some people believe that they're the mechanism by which we can actually do business in a coherent manner uh, in countries that have slightly or greatly different idiosyncrasies. Other people believe that they're just uh, absolute nonsense and they're basically there to limit everything that we do and they truly do not guarantee uh, fire safety. Uh, the, the objective here is to actually try to put all those arguments on the table uh, from the extreme technical side, to try to understand what are the technical components that are required for the standard, all the way to the more, uh, uh, let's say, legal, social implications and business implications that can uh, be associated to standardization. And uh, so that at the end of the day, you can come up uh, with your own ideas of uh, how valuable our standards are, how good our standards are, or if that's the case, how poor our standards are, and how much do we need to actually improve them. So, I hope that you uh, enjoy uh, the day, and uh, it is intended to be a day of discussion, more than a day of lecturing, and, uh, and the hope is that uh, that, that discussion will, uh, will occur during the day. Uh, so that's the first thing I wanted to say. Uh, the second thing is that there is a specific um, uh, in, in important event uh, today, which is the fact that we are uh, giving uh, uh, the first Philip H. Thomas uh, lecture and medal. And uh, it is important to us in, in the sense that it's very related to this type of conference and very related to the work that we do at the BIE Center for Fire Safety Engineering. Uh, I am no one to talk about uh, Phil Thomas because I am one of those people that actually just learned about Phil Thomas uh, through the work that he did through his papers. So I don't know the history and, uh, and I think Jeff Cox will enlighten us uh, a little bit on who Phil Thomas, the person and the scientist was. Uh, me as a person, uh, I first encountered Philip Thomas when I was doing my PhD and uh, uh, my supervisor was doing a consultancy job and, uh, and he said, uh, just go and look into this tunnel stuff that Thomas did. So I went and looked into the work of Phil Thomas on ventilation. And I have to say that I seriously struggled. I couldn't understand it at all. I went again and again and again and again. But what I could see from the beginning to the end was that he was starting with first principles, putting the science on the table, and then all of a sudden he was appearing with a practical solution. So he had an answer that actually gave the numbers that I actually needed to provide to my supervisor. Nevertheless, everything in between, between this fundamental science and this answer, uh, I could not figure out. I have to say it took me years and a lot of embarrassment to try to figure out. And what I realized in the process of figuring out this work is the enormous level of intuition that was put in every single one of those simplifications that went into delivering an answer. The objective of the, of the BRE Center for Fire Safety Engineering is to deliver answers, but based on fundamental science. So we are not as talented and as gifted as, he, as Philip Thomas was, so we cannot put that level of intuition that make people like me suffer for weeks or months to try to understand the work. And the objective of this meeting is fundamentally to do the same thing, to confront theory with application. And I think that from my perspective and the reason why we chose to have uh, Philip Thomas as being the representative of what we're trying to do is because I believe that in the subsequent papers and all the work that I have read from him and after meeting him and actually hearing him speak, I realized that at the end of the day, I believe that he symbolizes that. He symbolizes an individual that could start from the first principles and in some way or another would manage to deliver the answer that the practice wanted. 
And uh, so I think that visionaries of, of that nature, there's only a few. I think that we have uh, one of those uh, sitting here in this room, uh, which is Frank Rushbrook, that had a very similar idea to uh, Philip Thomas, which is how do we take what we are, the science, the university, uh, the education, and actually give it to those people that are in the practice. And he pushed at the University of Edinburgh the development of, uh, um, of an educational program that was intended to do that, to transfer the knowledge base, the science, the engineering into the practice. So I think today what we're celebrating is basically that transfer between theory, scientific value, understanding, and physical principles into the practice. And the hope is that at the end of the day, uh, you will come out of this room thinking that in the case of the standards, we have really tried to merge those two things to come up with, a, with an idea of where are we missing things and, uh, and where are we doing things right. So I'm not going to say anything further. I'll just simply introduce uh, uh, Professor Dreisel, uh, who will introduce uh, this year's uh, recipient of the Philip H. Thomas Medal and Lecture. Thank you very much. gentlemen, can you all hear me? It's my very great pleasure to introduce Jeff Cox as the inaugural Philip Thomas Lecturer. Jeff, in fact, needs no introduction to those working on the leading edge of fire science and fire safety engineering, having worked for 30 years in the field until he retired as research director of the UK Fire Research Station in 2003. His principal uh, technical contribution, in fact there were many technical contributions, but his principal one was in the development and continuous promotion of the methodology of computational fluid dynamics and uh, modeling associated with it. Although he is actually quite concerned that he was a bit too successful in this and it's uh, uh, he feels that the technique is now being used too routinely in fire safety engineering design. However, the international recognition that he has received uh, is best illustrated by the fact that he served as the chairman of uh, the ISO Technical Committee on Fire Safety, which is TC92, from 1995 to 2003. And during his tenure, TC92 focused on the exploitation of fire safety engineering as a recognizable discipline. In addition, he served as secretary of the IAFSS, the International Association of Fire Safety Science, from 1991 until 1997. And in January 2001, he was invited by the US United Engineering Foundation to lead the first conference on fire safety engineering in San Diego with a view to uh, establish a research agenda to underpin fire safety engineering in the future. And following the collapse of the World Trade Centers, he also led the first CIB Global Leaders Summit on tall buildings at BRE in April 2002. He worked very closely with Philip Thomas at the fire service station and continues to collaborate with him even today, particularly on the spill plume problem um, in fact, there is really no one more deserving or more appropriate than Jeff Cox to present his very first uh, Philip Thomas lecture. And with that, Jeff, I'd like to invite you up here to uh, give your uh, lecture. 